God Speaks by Meher Baba Part 8 That is chapter 8 is being continued. The only reason for such infinite demonstration in the field of nothingness which is illusion is because the basic finite triple nature of man that is energy, mind and happiness of nothingness is upheld and stretched out ad infinitum by the basic infinite trio nature of God, infinite power, infinite knowledge and infinite bliss of everything. Infinite power is unbounded and is never reduced nor exhausted, whereas finite energy, though linked with infinite power, is reduced and exhausted because it is only the outcome of the nothing manifested as the finite energy of nothingness. Infinite knowledge is eternal, uniform and all-pervading and therefore is without a break in its continuity. The limited mind, however, though linked with infinite knowledge, is annihilated and made to vanish ultimately because it is the outcome of the nothing manifested as the finite mind of nothingness. Infinite bliss is bliss eternal and continual and because it is perpetual, it is without any opposite aspect. Happiness on the other hand, although linked with infinite bliss, is not perpetual and therefore it has an opposite aspect of misery. This infinite happiness vanishes even though it is the very basis of the life of the human being because life itself is transient. As the life of illusion is the outcome of the nothing manifested as the life of nothingness, this life must perish. A stage is reached when man in his travail to recognize God ultimately loses his basic finite triple nature that is body typifying happiness, energy and mind and realizes the basic infinite trio nature of bliss, power and knowledge. In this state man experiences that his nature is not the finite body but is infinite bliss, not the finite energy but infinite power, not the finite mind but infinite knowledge. Thus man loses his basic finite triple nature and realizes that his is the basic infinite trio nature of God. This means that the basic finite triple nature of man which was upheld by the basic infinite trio nature of God is unlinked from the basic infinite trio nature of God. Although the man loses his basic finite triple nature, the full consciousness that he gained in his travel is not lost because full consciousness once gained is never lost except in gross misuse of the powers of the fourth plane as previously described. In this state, with consciousness intact and complete, the limited and finite body typifying happiness, the limited and finite energy and the limited and finite mind are all totally unlinked from the unlimited and infinite bliss power and knowledge respectively. This is the stage when man is fully conscious and yet no longer experiences the false finite nothingness as real and infinite. The body typifying happiness, energy and mind which were instrumental in giving the experience of the nothingness no longer grip the consciousness of man with finite impressions. These are now unlinked and have simply vanished from the focus of the consciousness. They must vanish because they were of the finite nothing by nature which literally means absolutely nothing. But before body, energy and mind ultimately lose their grip over the consciousness of man, there is one predominant experience which he has in his everyday life that of sleeping and waking every day. This fundamental experience is a normal in a normal man gives rise to three basic states in his everyday life. The first state is the sound sleep state or the state of complete unconsciousness of the self in man. The second state is the dream state or the semi-conscious or semi-awake state. 
The third state is the completely awake state or the state of complete consciousness of the self in man as man. Now man's cognizance is life in man and man's life is made cognizant through the actions of man. Actions are generated by the impressions of man and vice versa. These impressions of man are picked up and imprinted on the mind of a man by actions. Impressions and actions are thus interdependent because impressions are fed by actions and actions are motivated by impressions. As said previously, the source of impressions is traced as far back as the latent nothing in the everything, which means God in the God is state. When the nothing first became manifested as nothingness in the shape of creation, the primal manifestation of the nothing gave rise to the first trace of consciousness in God and here upon the first impression of nothingness manifested. This first impression procreated impressions with the evolution of consciousness. With the evolution of consciousness, accordingly all impressions are of the nothing and as nothing literally means nothing, these impressions are naturally nothing but mere impressions. But because it was through these very impressions of nothing that consciousness evolved fully and completely in man, the consciousness of man is closely linked with these impressions of nothing and makes man consciously experience this false nothing as everything and real. Impressions as such play a vital role in the life of man until such time as they are completely wiped away, relieving and freeing consciousness from experiencing the false nothing as everything and real. Consciousness, when relieved of all impressions, will no longer experience the false nothing as real, but it will experience reality as the unlimited self, that is, God. As long as impressions persist and continue to impress the consciousness of man, these impressions activated and generated by the energy of man are being constantly imprinted on the mind of man and are being retained or stored in his subconsciousness. Some of these impressions remain dormant in the subconsciousness of man for hours or days or years and sometimes for lifetimes. But most of them get projected through the subconsciousness of man every moment of his life while he experiences semi-conscious and fully conscious states, that is, the dream and awake states respectively. When these impressions remain absolutely dormant, the man is in his sound sleep state. When these impressions begin to get projected from the subconsciousness of man, they are hazy in their initial stages. Being in varied, being in varied sub subtle forms molded out of the nothingness and the man is said to be in a semi-conscious state experiencing dreams through his subconsciousness. When these hazy impressions grow clearer in their final or ripe stages of projection, the nothingness in subsubtle forms is experienced as gross forms and the man is said to be in a fully conscious or awake state, experiencing the gross world through his full consciousness in a completely awake state. When the man wakes up, the projections of impressions of nothing manifest the same dream of nothingness more forcefully and realistically. In other words, the same dream is said to be at its height now in the awake state of man. Therefore, the awake state of man is the experiencing of that same hazy state of dreams only now they are experienced clearly being at their height and in their fully ripe and final stages. The dream of a man is but a drama enacted by the projection of man's own dormant impressions. These impressions when projected through man's subconsciousness create things and creates and creatures of the dream as subsubtle forms. Man in the dream state not only becomes involved in the drama of his dream and plays the roles of both the creator of that dream and of the hero in the drama of that dream, but in this dream, in the drama, but in this drama, man also gets closely associated with the things and the creatures in their subsubtle forms, which are of his own creation in his dream state. 
दिस क्रिएशन ऑफ सबसेटल फॉरम्स कम्स एंटायरली एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ मैंस ओन पास्ट एंड प्रजेंट इम्प्रेशंस दस मैन इन हिज ड्रीम स्टेट एसोसिएट्स सबकॉन्शियसली विथ फॉर्म्स इन सबसेटल स्टेट्स वेन रिकलेक्टेड बाई अ मैन इन द अवेक स्टेट दीज वेरी फॉरम्स विच ही हैज सीन एंड एसोसिएटेड विद इन द ड्रीम स्टेट रिमाइंड हिम ऑफ हिज कॉन्शियस एसोसिएशन विद द ग्रॉस फॉरम्स एज थिंग्स क्रीचर्स एंड बींग्स एसोसिएटेड विद इन हिज डे टू डे लाइफ ऑफ द प्रजेंट एंड लिंक दम विद हिज कनेक्शन कॉन्टैक्ट्स एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन हिज लाइफ ऑफ द इमीडिएट एंड समटाइम्स डिस्टेंट पास्ट but more often than not a man also recollects in his conscious awake state that a particular gross form whether of a thing creature or being with which he is closely associates and which he associ- actually seeks reminds him of having witnessed that same object in his dream at some time in the past either some days months or years ago thus it actually happens that a form of the future which he happened to witness in his dream of the past reappears to the man as a gross form in his life associations of the present after a lapse of time the same object that the man was totally ignorant of ever having seen or contacted before in his lifetime appears to him now in the wake state exactly as he had witnessed it before in his dream state experiences of a similar nature are also recorded in which a man witnesses certain incidents in his dreams years in advance of their actual occurrence how is it possible for a man to witness in advance in the drama of his dream such forms and incidents of the futurity when this drama of the dream is only the outcome of his past and present everyday life impressions is it really possible in the dream of the present for one to come across and witness a certain object which is totally of the future and to establish future associations with it in advance yet all the while remain ignorant of the object until it is eventually contacted and consciously associated with in an awake state one day in the distant future even if such a thing be really possible and if the future is being inadvertently probed by man in his dream then from where does futurity spring into man's present how could man living in the present through his own impressions of the past ever come to grips with futurity even in a dream state and associate in advance with impressions of future incidents and objects what is it that endows man with the faculty of prescience these very associations with future objects and incidents though experienced inadvertently inad- inadvertently and unknowingly by man in the present are unautomatically developed and are inevitably there by virtue of man's being the creator of the drama in his dream state no sooner does man become the creator of the drama of his dream state through the projection of his dormant impressions then this very projection in his own dormant impressions reflects his past as if it was really his present and man finding himself involved in his drama in this drama gets absorbed in his past while still maintaining his past to be his present in this manner although all the time remaining in the present the man inadvertently and unknowingly continues to preserve his past maintaining it to be his present but when man continues to preserve his past he being at the same being at the same time the creator also concurrently becomes the preserver of his own creation through his spontaneous associations with the objects in the drama of his dream state these very associations though inadvertently established maintain the continuity of the drama and endow the creator with the role of the preserver as well in every we bit act of preservation of all that which has passed man in his present as the preserver of his past inadvertently and unknowingly also simultaneously establishes the future in his very present by the very act of preserving his past as his present which present had 
remained away always as the future of the past take for example a man who finds himself living in the present of today and who looks upon yesterday as all of his past and tomorrow as all of his future now as soon as this man asserts that he is living in the present of today he inadvertently inadvertently and unknowingly has preserved that past of yesterday not only as the present of today but also as the future of tomorrow just by maintaining himself as alive today in the present in every wee bit act of preserving the past of yesterday while while maintaining himself as living in the present of today that man also inadvertently and unknowingly establishes in his present of today this today as the future of yesterday so it is that although the past and the future have their own stand yet both of these are consistently and concurrently preserved only in the present it is only because of the present that both the past and the future find their point of fusion everlastingly in the present in the entirety of existence there is no time there is no past and no future only the everlasting present therefore in eternity nothing has ever happened and nothing will ever happen everything is happening in the unending now if there is anything happening at all because all that has apparently happened all that is apparently happening and all that will ever apparently happen in the illusory cosmic universe is all that which god has already dreamt the moment his own original infinite whim surged as who am i so really speaking nothing has happened and nothing will ever happen when man in his dream state associates with past present and even future forms he simply inverts the roles of creating associations then preserving that association and eventually destroying that association while all the time maintaining that he is the witness to all these in the present of his dream state on this very basis of the creation and preservation of all things creatures and beings created and preserved whether in the dream state or in the awake state their hinges at every step in the present and inevitable destruction as the future of all things created and preserved anything that has its beginning must have its inevitable end and all things created must inevitably be destroyed however much such things be preserved anticipating futurity futurity advertently on in our inadvertently as destruction in the very act of preservation man in the present automatically becomes the preserver of all things that he created in the past man becomes the preserver being in the know being in the know of the future that consistently confronts him in the garb of unfailing destruction that awaits its inevitable turn as futurity of course man himself is really not aware that he knows the future but the very fact that he is the preserver shows that he must be anticipating the destruction and as destruction belongs to the domain of futurity the man though not aware that he knows the future is knowing it all the time that he is engaged in playing the role of the preserver in the present in the very act of becoming the creator preservation of all things created follows and the creator per force simultaneously has to play the role of the preserver concurrently in the very act of becoming the preserver destruction of all things pres- preserved is anticipated therefore all things are advertently or inadvertently preserved and the preserver therefore establishes in the present the future of all things created and preserved anticipating the inevitable destruction god in his original infinite divine dream state eternally plays the three roles of the creator preserver and destroyer simultaneously when god is in the process of preserving his own infinite creation he is already at the same time in the future and having preserved what he created which has passed the future is definitely established before him even in his eternal present which future will destroy what he created in the past and he what and what he preserved in the present therefore god being omniscient 
and eternally of the present knows of the past which he eternally preserves as the present and also at the same time he constantly experiences in advance in his eternal present all that which is of the future similarly god in the man state as man inadvertently witnesses all the time in his dream state that which is also to be experienced in the future of his awake state man thus finds that he sometimes has a presence of things that come to pass after a lapse of time to sum up in the very act of creation the acts of preservation and destruction are also present so by creating illusion god as it were simultaneously preserves and destroys it in reality therefore nothing is created that remains to be preserved and destroyed because the created creation is of the nothing and this nothing is in reality means absolutely nothing in all respects though this nothing is indeed nothing at all yet when it is said that the nothing is created by brahma preserved by vishnu and destroyed by mahesha or shiva it is spoken of only in terms of the infinite illusion that is in terms of the infinite divine dream state of god related to the illusory universe the brahmananda in the eternity of reality there is absolutely no such thing as creation preservation or destruction neither is there space nor is there any scope for reality much less could there ever be the correlated factors of time such as the past present and future in the eternity of reality the one infinite eternal all pervading existence is uh, all pervading existence is in short when the consciousness of a man makes him experience the impressions of the nothing subconsciously the man is said to be dreaming a dream when the consciousness of the man causes him to experience more realistically the impressions of the same nothing fully consciously the man is said to be dreaming yet another dream into the dream or he is said to be dreaming into the dream a vacant dream experiencing the nothing into nothing hence it is said most appropriately that the war and its affairs are nothing into nothing dream into dream this means that god in the main state experiences the life of man as a vacant dream into the divine dream which means creation or in other words the life of man is yet but another dream of god in the dreaming of his divine dream or the creation although god in the man state has gained full consciousness and falsely experiences the multifarious impressions of the false infinity of nothingness as the reality of the gross world this full consciousness and these innumerable impressions are all absorbed or gulped in while god in the man state passes away in the sound sleep state indirectly asserting his original divine state of divine sound sleep when god in the man state completely wakes up every day from his sound sleep state the full consciousness which lay dormant during sound sleep and the multitude of impressions which had vanished that is out of sight and out of experience in the sound sleep are now all catapulted out to produce once again the false experiences of the finite nothing manifesting as real and infinite nothing this unending chain of alternating absorption and ejection of consciousness and impressions in the alternating sound sleep and awake states continues until ultimately all of the impressions are ousted or wiped out clean through the experiences of the opposite impressions in the process of reincarnation and involution of consciousness thus impressionless consciousness alone remain to give god the conscious experience of his original eternal infinite real god state as god invariably gains full and unimpressioned consciousness through the human form the different states of man may be taken as examples with which to compare the different states of god the sound sleep state of god in the main state not only resembles and 
resembles the divine sound sleep state of God but is literally the same original divine sound sleep state of God in the beyond. The beyond state of God is where unbounded absolute vacuum prevails. When man passes away in the sound sleep state, absolute vacuum and no consciousness prevails. And though the self in man continues to breathe normally, yet in that self of man, there is no consciousness of its limited I or ego, nor is there consciousness of the limited mind, energy, body or the world. The self in man is not even conscious of its own being. In short, in the sound sleep state of man, the self is and consciousness is not. When a man wakes up daily from his sound sleep state, he normally just wakes up for no reason whatsoever the, except that his own dormant consciousness of impressions urges or excites his subconsciousness to eject out the consciousness and experience the dormant impressions which apparently vanish in sound sleep. Therefore, as soon as the man wakes up, he invariably and simultaneously gains consciousness at first of his surroundings and gradually then of his own self. With all of its paraphernalia of the limited I, the mind, energy, the body and the world to be continued.